Hello listener, my name is Ingrid Cold. What were you hoping to hear? A podcast about creatures or the unexplained from two suspiciously qualified individuals? I know you were. I've been watching these two for long enough. Let's listen in as Dave and Austin take you on the tour of the inspirations and theories behind pop culture's most interesting monsters. Welcome to the Cryptic Cast. For a cue or dub, she said, when I seen in big red eyes, she said, uh, we were out of there. Can't tell you what the rest of them looks like. Welcome to the Cryptid Cast. I'm your card carrying cryptozoologist, Dave Chaffins, and joining me is my favorite son of a mothman, Austin O'Connor. How you doing, Austin? I gotta tell you something that I didn't tell you earlier, what? and I saved it for this. Okay. I am currently trying to become a card carrying cryptozoologist. Oh, are you? Yeah, just well, to what, screw now, up the intro. Now here's the now, but what happens then? What 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 happens? I mean, I, because I have been in it longer, do I become the? <laughs> I need to bring balance to the universe. Do I become the, the senior universe. card carrying cryptozoologist? And you, you know the, the gif junior? of you know the gif like of Thanos and he's sitting down at the, from the end of uh, of the what was the first one? The Infinity uh, War. Infinity War. Yes. When he like sits down and he's staring out at the sunset. He's yeah, brought, yeah. Like he just brought balance to the universe. That's gonna be me, just sitting mm-hmm. down with my cryptozoology degree well, I'm, i really am going for it i'm curious i'm curious to see what that looks like what the what the criteria are you know because it's rigorous as all get out that's i'm gonna i'm gonna mat and frame mine though and i'm gonna bring it in and what's make gonna you be, hang it up in your house what's gonna be your speciality what's what kind of like what, what's gonna be your like because you gotta have like uh, you gotta specialize in something well, here's the know? thing who said i only have to get one degree i could get multiple that's true and then then who's the card carrying cryptozoologist? As um, uh, Lindsay Lohan once said, the limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. But I'm good. I'm sore. I feel like I'm falling apart is the problem. I woke up Monday morning and uh, my hand mm-hmm. or like my wrist felt like it, it had been sprained somehow, like mm-hmm. all through here. Yeah. And then my like left arm was sore and my back hurt. Mm-hmm. All I did Sunday was lay around and watch TV. You know what that is. I mean, what? it's allergies. It's allergies. It's just allergies. It's allergy My season. whole body hurts when I have allergies. It's allergy season. Yeah. But I don't know. I woke up Monday morning and was just, what song am I? That's reminding me of, uh, oh, Sunday morning coming down, Johnny. That I was like, I woke up Monday morning with no way to hold my head. That didn't hurt, but it's Sunday morning coming I'm, down. I'm not sure about that. You don't listen to Johnny uh, Cash? Uh, well, I mean, not really. But, you know, guess what? He's a relative of mine. <laughs> of as, course he is. Uh, you know, mark that down in the books. Or something. Of Actually, he it's, he's not really, he is not a relative of mine. His wife is. Um, good old Gene Go Carter. figure. I know. Go figure. Wild. You're just well connected. Uh, apparently, I don't know. That, let me tell you what those connections have gotten me. Absolutely nothing. Uh, a a the, cryptozoology it, degree. Y- yeah, those connections <laughs> sure, certainly yeah. have. But I'm I'm in a good mood today. You are? It's opening night. Football's back, baby. Football's back? Packers and the Bears play tonight. I don't care about either team, but I'm going to be watching because football's back. Mm, I'm a big fan of the Kentucky Galaxy. Um, are you... You familiar with them? I'm they, gonna be honest. I don't in, know what you're talking they about. They were in the PlayStation 2 version, I think a Madden 08, <laughs> and they were like equi- the equivalent of like the Charlotte Hornets, where like they were there, but they weren't. I don't recall them being in Madden 08. I'm pretty sure that they were. You go look that up. I think maybe you're thinking of NFL All Pro like 2K8, the one that had what? all of the. Mm, I'm not sure what that game is because Madden only has NFL teams. Pretty sure Kentucky Galaxy was an NFL team. No, you know I'm, but I'm your number one source of football <laughs> news, Austin. <laughs> I am so lost on where you're getting this See, information. See, there's something. Maybe I'm from here's that. Maybe it's like the the Mandela effect or something. And like I come from a world where the Kentucky Galaxy was a thing. Here's the thing. Is this like the Berenstein Bears thing or something? It might be. That's what yeah. I'm trying to say. Is that 
I've and I remember the logo, and it's like this, like it looks like a galaxy, and it's kind of like a swirl, kind of like the Carolina Hurricanes. Like it's yeah. kind of like a swirl, but it's purple, and it's got some like. Are you thinking of like a team from? The, the movie The Replacements with Keanu Reeves? Are you thinking of no, something like no. that? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you thinking of the team from Varsity Blues? No, I'm not thinking of that. I'm thinking of yeah, It was know. literally in a game. It was in a game that I played where you, you got to face off. I know you got to play the other, who were the big football teams? You got, um, uh, you know, the um, Ohio uh, Cardinals, and you've got the Florida uh, Salamanders, and you've got, who else? And none of those are real teams. I hate to burst your bubble right now, but we'll, none we'll of get, that exists. We'll get back to that. So none of that exists. Does so it exist? What What was the? It makes me think of the episode of The Office where uh, Andy tries to get his job back as uh, regional manager, mm-hmm. and he's like, "I talked to David Wallace," and Toby's like, "Do you do you see do you see David Wallace in the room right now, Andy? Do you talk to him a lot? Like they like think they like think he's crazy." It's like you like. Do you see the Kentucky Galaxy a lot? Do you the, the, the Florida Salamanders and obviously the Ohio whatever I just the said Florida. Cardinals are made up, but the Kentucky Florida. Galaxy is a real freaking thing. It's not a real thing. It's man. a real thing. You need to. You, I'm looking it up. I right now. No, don't. No, we're gonna. No, move we're on. no, we're getting to this. The Kentucky Galaxy. Kentucky Galaxy. Yes, was it was an NFL team. I'm a hundred percent sure. <laughs> I, tell me. I'm going to tell you right now. What? There is absolutely no result on anything Are you serious? for Kentucky Galaxy. Are you serious? <laughs> There's Galaxy Con in Louisville. Kentucky? <laughs> Are you, I, I'm 100%. Dude, that is not a real thing. It is a real thing. It was I in, would it tell was in you, Madden 08. It was not. I played it was. Madden 08. Madden 08. There was nothing Kentucky anywhere Galaxy. near. You're losing it, man. It was. It, it was a team. It was there. Next, you're going to tell me that the XFL isn't real. <laughs> XFL's back. <laughs> we got it back. But oh, goodness. we really got off track there. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, it's been, so it's been a particularly, I went to uh, Philadelphia for a week. Yeah. I was up there uh, flying the drones. And like, I'm reading, so like right now I'm reading Mothman Prophecies, which I, I guess it's been a long time coming. Mm-hmm. I suppose uh, so. I'm doing that, and then I'm playing this video game called uh, Control, mm-hmm. which is about this Federal Bureau of Control that that um, like is essentially the government wing that controls all paranormal events. Right. So it's like very uh, similar stuff. Uh, so it was like particularly creepy. But uh, while I was gone, mm-hmm. uh, Selena was uh, was home alone. My wife. She was home alone. My wife. My wife was home alone. And uh, she, I think, like, went through a normal routine after she got home from work, didn't do anything, um, didn't, like, do anything out of the ordinary, went to go get something out of the fridge, opened it up. And the way our fridge is, it's, like, two doors at the top and then, like, that, that open kind of like a cabinet. And then the bottom one is, like, a pull-out yeah. door that has the freezer in it. Right. So she opens the top two drawers. And in the bottom of it, she finds this stamp. A stamp, like a postage stamp, like a postage stamp, but it is very like it's brownish in color. It's yeah. very old. A stamp that we have never seen, mm-hmm. and we have never had. Now, here's the thing: I now we live in an old house. That's that's fine, and I would believe that maybe it, it was something that was left around. Here's the thing: we bought that fridge after we moved in. Mm-hmm. This is a new fridge. Hmm. So she goes and she's she's got it and, and she gets this like weird feeling about her where it's like this is like this is an old and there's like three smiling guys in military uniforms on the stamp. What? And she was completely and totally like there's a spirit in the house. That left the stamp here. There is no other explanation for it. It is not something that we have ever seen. I'll post a picture of it so you can see it. I want to see this thing. I, I, we have it. We did not get rid of it because we thought that would be bad, Gigi. But she spoke out loud. She was like, uh, uh, I, I see. It was like, I see that you've left me, th- left me this. I appreciate you being here. 
I do not want to see anything else. I don't want to hear anything else. Like, I, I thank you for your visit, but you need to leave me alone. I'm like, <laughs> thought that and said that out loud to yeah, the world. And so her family uh, in the past has, has gotten, um, like, different... What's what's a good uh, like uh, her parents' home? It's like generations of people have lived there, and so like her mother will often smell like her grandfather's cigar smoke. Um, yeah, and she'll get um, stuff from um, like like d- different kind of uh, items and stuff from from her um, grandparents, and so we were like, okay, you know, it's probably not a spirit in this house because we don't think that it's like spirit. It's probably like uh, one of her relatives that while I was gone was like, okay, let's, we're going to protect her. We're going to be there, Mm -hmm. but left the stamp. So here's the crazy part. Okay. So we go over to Blacksburg um, that weekend and we're telling them about the stamp. We forgot to bring the stamp uh, with us. We were telling them about showing pictures and stuff and, um, her mom was like, yeah, you know, um, I got, I, I found one of, um, it was her grandfather or father. I'm not sure. And Selena told me to tell the story very correctly. I'm not sure. I forgot. Um, <laughs> she told you, you to you tell us. said, I've got this. I've got I've this. Got this. Yeah, and here whatever. you are. Um, so she pulled out this Boy Scout trading card. Mm-hmm. and was like, this was left for me. And like, I've never seen this before in my entire life. But one day it just appeared. I have like... And this belonged to her father, her grandfather. I think it was her grandfather. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Never seen it before in her entire life. And one day she like, just like, it was like out in the middle, like just like right there. And so she was showing it to us. Austin, she turns it over. And on the back looks like, it's like a, a, a flip it over the back, and on the back there's like a little bit of residue mm-hmm. in the shape of a stamp. What? That's been removed. What? And we were all like, "Whoa!" And Selena said she like saw that and like immediately got a chill. Did you guys? Did they find them around the same time? No, I mean this was like years before she found this this card, and she kept it. You know, obviously. That's. Creepy. And so I don't like that. We were all like, "Whoa, hold up!" We yeah. all passing around, and it's like in the same like. Um, end it. It was like, woohoo! Don't like that. Yeah. So Not one bit. We had we had a we had a brush with something. Uh, over Stuff the past. like that happens, man. I I smell my dad's cologne sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I'll, I'll smell my grandmother's um, cooking. And her, uh, like her perfume. Yeah. I'll smell that. I wear the same cologne as my dad, so that's only, I'm just kidding. I don't, but one time I bought mean? cologne. Oh, you, you can like, like <laughs> smell is like one of the number one things. I, I know. One time I did accidentally buy the same cologne. I never knew what the cologne was that he mm. wore because I just remember him having it as a kid. So you like put it on. And I think like, it was a few years ago. I, I guess I accidentally or someone got it for me for Christmas or something. Mm. And I like put it on. I didn't think about it. And later that day I realized, I was like, that's what like I was yeah. I, th- I kept the whole day I was like man something smells like like dad and then it was like it's, it's me it's I'm wearing the cologne I don't even remember what it was now but but no was, I, I to that like I'll smell randomly I would smell like the cigarettes that my grandpa used to smoke yeah. or like my yeah. dad's cologne or it is weird and sometimes I feel like it's my mind playing tricks on me just because you have it ingrained in your head but stuff like that with the stamp that's weird yeah ah that's creepy that's really weird. Um, yeah. Oh, especially being home alone. Well, she was like, as she, and she felt like at peace. Uh, she had, she spoke those words and felt, uh, you know, kind of at peace with it and slept fine. Like yeah. uh, no issue. But the, the thing about the like little trading card or whatever and like flipping that over and then seeing the imprint <laughs> stamp there and we were like, Okay. Yeah. Whoa. You don't think her parents are messing with you guys, though? No, 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 no. They no, were like in shock. No. But the, well, Selena has seen that card before. Yeah. But like they, they don't, they didn't think of anything about this like little the back it was, of it. The back of it. They didn't really. I mean, they just saw like, oh, it's a little bit of dirt or something. You need to take and, the stamp down there. Yeah, we and, do. Like, we make do. You see it's, if it it's, fits. It's Austin, it's like super. It's like, it's like, like almost a hundred percent, like. Oh man, I need. I can't wait to see this stamp. Yeah, that's oh man. Yeah. So that's my 
brush with well, the supernatural. I you had a different kind of brush with um, uh, an entity uh, this weekend. <laughs> Entities. Entities. Um, I ran into your parents in Bluefield mm-hmm. on what was it Saturday? Yes, we had a big 80th birthday party for Dixie. Mm. And your parents were there. So what was that? What was that like? What was the scene? So we Set had the stage. I would say like sixty to seventy people, like family and friends of her mm. at the church there. And I didn't know that your parents were there. I had asked Nana, and she was like, "Well, yeah, I believe you know they they should be there." Um, but I didn't see them like at first mm. when I, I sat down with my food, and I hadn't seen your parents yet. Right. And I get up to go get something to drink, and I feel. Somebody tap on my shoulder and I turn and, and your mom's like, hey, Austin, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. And the next thing she says is, now, can you do me a favor? Can you just figure out what in the heck is going on with David's hair and why he won't cut it? <laughs> like, that's the, that's the, she just went straight to it. And I kind of laughed. She was like, what in the world is he doing growing his hair out? And then she was like, you just try to get him to cut it for me. So I was like, all right, I'll do that. And then I go on up and like 10 minutes later, I feel somebody tap on my shoulder again. I turn and it's your dad. Yeah. I had never met your dad before. Are you serious? I had seen him at the church just in passing. I had never talked to him. How many times have you been over to this house, you think? <laughs> That's the th- yeah. it's it's funny. I well, I look up and the way the facial expression he had, it was you. Oh, in yeah. like 30 yeah. years or whatever. Like I, yeah. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Just the like kind of grin he had on his face. Yeah. And he just kind of laughed. And he was like, We've really never met, have we? But the way he said it sounded like, like you. Like, it yeah. was that voice. Yeah. And I was like, this is weird. Like, yep. This is so weird. Yep. And I didn't, like, expect that voice. Like, you all talk the same, the I same. feel like. Yeah, like, I the know. same way. <laughs> and the way he kind of, like, chuckled, I was like, that's David. Like, yeah. that's David. Yeah. And he kind of, he was just talking about the podcast. And I'm pretty sure he mentioned, he was like, he was like, get David to cut his hair or something like that. Well, I'm glad that... <laughs> yeah. And then I show up today and your hair is cut. I didn't even tell you. I was saving it. Yeah. I was going to be like, your parents want you to so, cut it. But, but cut my hair's already cut. You already cut it. Jokes so. on them and you. Jokes on them. <laughs> but... <laughs> no, yeah. I was watching a... Um, we were watching this... Uh, it's like one of these old family videos from when my, my sister was, was little and... It was for a family reunion that they had had, and my pa- my parents were fairly young, and they were going around, and and like it was just like all the relatives from my mom's side in the family, and they're sh- like say hello, say hello. Mm-hmm. I notice it's like okay, the, the cameraman's like giving like directions of stuff. I'm like, that guy sounds exactly like me. Yeah, that's crazy. I was like, mom, who's this relative that has the camera? And she goes, David. That's your dad. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> so then it all, it all like it all made, clicked. It all made sense, you know. It all it you all, all legitimately all same voice. Yep, like same same. I mean, just like speech yep. structure, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Like it was it was weird, and the way it, the reason it was crazy was because he was standing behind me, and I was kind of looking up, and the light was coming through the window, so he was partially silhouetted. So I could mm. only like kind of barely make out his facial features, right, right. and it, that's why it looked it even like more like you. It was like weird, yeah. Because like I could see you and hear that, and I was like, David, <laughs> <Is that laughs> like looking up at the light. God, is that you? Like, yes. No, but it was it was funny. I was glad to finally meet him. It's the tri- time traveling version of me. I yeah, <laughs> but and he had a VT shirt on, so I was like, it's David. There we go. Um, you got it. Yeah, Dixie's eighty. It was a fun. Guy was there. Guy Winterbotham, friend of the show. <laughs> friend of the show. Friend of Guy the show. Winterbotham. Guy Winterbotham. He was walking. Yeah. He had his brace on. He was able to walk. Did, did he listen? <laughs> did he have anything to say about it? He he asked me. He said, he said, uh, how did it? You know, how did everyone react? And yeah. I I started. He was like, did a couple people listen? I was like, well, hopefully more than a couple people yeah, listened. Yeah. I think it went yeah, well. Yeah. It went well. People it, people I, people have messaged and said that they really enjoyed. Yeah, I told him I was like, we're gonna have guess. to have you back on. We even uh, got a review on iTunes that was like, "Did we? You guys knocked out of the part in episode two with your guest." And I was thinking wow. to myself, wow. "Big time, guy but, um, Botham, bringing in that Australian fire." I know, you know. But long, yeah. Dixie, she's eighty. It was funny. She, the night before, tried to practice a speech, but she was wine drunk because my my whole family was there, so we were all just hanging out. Yeah, just hanging out. She yeah. like got on a tangent about like World War Two or something in the middle of her speech, and we were like, "Leave that out." 
we're going to leave that out tomorrow. So she gets up in front of everybody the next day and is like, I want to give a speech. And we're all like, just nervous. Yeah. Like, what is she going to say? And she like, literally, she goes, and I'm going to leave out World War II. And I'm going to move on to this. And like everyone that wasn't there the night before is like, wait, like, what, what is, is she talking What is this about? woman talking about? But it was yeah. fun. But it was, uh, I was like, man, got to chill with David's parents for like an hour, mm-hmm. eat some food, and, uh, and hang out. I feel like that church is haunted. It was kind of creepy. Well, I mean, you know, the organ is haunted. Did you not know that the organ, the, I mean, the organ is 100% haunted. Like, really? The, there's, there's no question. I have seen it myself. The organ is haunted. Um, the organ will just um, so if you look at the organ, mm-hmm. it has a bunch of like knobs that you have to pull and mm-hmm. like that stay out based on like so you want to sound like this, you pull these knobs, yeah, press these keys. Mm-hmm. My mother will be playing the organ and then she'll hit something in the middle of the song. All of the knobs will change, not just when she's pulled out, some will pop themselves out, really, and like move themselves. And she says, oftentimes, it's like it sounds a little bit better. It's like there's an old director there, like that's the thing. There is a, a an old famous <coughs> not, not fam- well, famous for the area, but an yeah. old um uh like organ director there and was very into the organ playing and was there yeah. for for years and years and years and had a lot of well regard. They have like a little shrine to him in the Really in the entrance. And so she the joke is that, um, but it's, it's it's she jokes around about it, but it is not a joke. That organ is definitely haunted. I've seen well, it that's myself. Cool. I definitely it. like just get the vibe because that's an older church, isn't it? Like mm-hmm. for yeah. Blue, I mean, well, not for Blue. There's a ton of old churches in Bluefield, but just in terms of compared to a lot of these new age churches, I mean, it's yeah, an old it's building. been around there for a long time, and definitely, I don't know. It's she. It was so funny. Uh, everybody was about to leave and she, your mom got over and like started playing happy birthday on the piano real quick for mm-hmm. everybody to basically scream that song at right, Dixie. Right. You, don't, you don't sing it. Yeah. You just scream it. It was, it was, it was a good time though, okay. but glad to see that you telepathically caught their message. I thought the hair looked fine. I was, see, I was a fan of you growing it out, but I was right. just letting if you my, know if that my your parents, parents had their way. I'd just be bald. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm trying out right now. I I'll see my parents this weekend, and um, I know I'll get um a you need to shave your beard. Message. Well, here's the thing. That now the thing the thing that will come be, if I see your parents out, they'll they, tell you. To, they'll tell me the things, yeah. and I wonder what that'll be. Well, actually, my mom met your mom finally. I thought they've met before. I don't know if they had. Because I introduced, I like introduced my mom to your mom. So this is like a meeting of the minds. It was, it was like, it was like a crossover episode. Like our parents (laughs) met. It was cool. (laughs) And your mom was like, do you listen to the podcast? My mom was like, yeah, I do. And she was like, I do too, but I need to listen to the latest episode. That's funny. They were like chatting about it. And I was like, well, yeah, family friendly podcast. Well, let's get to the creepy stuff. Enough, enough about our, our, that was kind of creepy though. Spirits and kin, you know. Enough about that stuff. But right now, before we get into it, we have to cue the sound effect. Oh, that scared me. <laughs> you made me jump out of my skin. Gave me the willies. Austin, this week I have a very important headline that you will find uh, to be relevant. Yes. Uh, that you will find to be... Uh, are, are, have you have you done any research on anything that I wrote in that little form? Hashtag relevant content. Hashtag relevant content. Okay. I'm coming into today surprised. I'm not going to lie. It was August of 2018. My Ooh. wife and I were My driving wife. south on Calumet Avenue. I think I'm saying that right. And we're coming up on the red light at 131 Street when we heard what sounded like a leather rustling. We looked to the retention pond to our left and saw glowing red. What I'm going to assume were eyes and saw a large bat-like creature take to the skies. It was dark colored and easily had to be six feet or more tall from what I could make out. Wingspan was close to 10 feet or more. About a week or so later, driving with my colleague in South Shore Ghostbusters, this time we saw it upon Klein Avenue overpass like it was eating something. We turned around only to see it take to the skies once more. We have been investigating the area and found this particular creature sticks close to the water. We have heard multiple accounts of seeing red glowing lights over the water of Lost Marsh since June or so of this year. In Hammond, Indiana, 
excuse me, Hammond, Indiana is a city bordering Lake Michigan on the southeastern edge of the Chicago metropolitan area. The location of Hagen's initial sighting is less than a mile south of the area where, in 2017, a witness reported two suspicious red lights they suspected could have been glowing eyes. Hagen's second, soci- second sighting is around 10 miles southeast of the 2017 report. This is the latest news in a string of Mothman sightings within a few hundred mile radius surrounding Lake Michigan, including every state bordering the Great Lake. These sightings ostensibly began in spring of 2017, but more historical accounts are being are, are being reported as more become aware of the phenomenon. Sightings of weird winged beings around Lake Michigan have reported at all hours, often in or near a park and around water. Witnesses consistently describe a large gray or black bat or bird-like creature, although in smaller number of cases, the creature was described as insect-like, sometimes with glowing or reflective eyes, red, yellow, or orange eyes, and humanoid features such as arms and legs are often reported. Can we faintly play The Boys Are Back in Town? Yeah. Under, like, yeah, under yeah, you yeah. reading that? Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll Guess who's back? Uh, or that. We can play that. He's, he's back. He's back, baby. He's he's here. He heard us talking about him. We we heard him, and uh, now he's going to Lake Michigan. What's he gonna do in Lake so Michigan? So my the place. This is where my brain goes. Okay. S- God forbid something bad's gonna happen in that area. He's warning us, man. Something's they're, happening. They're doing a. Bu- he's doing a bunch of warning. He's like coming out there. Let me tell you something. Here soon, you know who's gonna become knocking. It's gonna be injured, cold, and looking for the Mothman because that's what he does. Can we not? <laughs> Can we not do I that? Mean, Let's not do that. <laughs> Let's just not. Let's not go there. So here's the thing. No, I don't want to talk about it. cold. <laughs> I don't want to do it. So with Mothman, with Mothman coming back to that area, what do you what do you think that what do you think what do you think could be the disaster? What's the? It's near Chicago, right? It's, well, it's like Lake Michigan and around Lake Michigan. Is that just uh, my my question? Is like, is he there for? It seems like that's happened over a course of like a year or two, uh, which is not how Mothman was in Point Pleasant. But like, what what is happening? What's going on at Lake Michigan? Mm. What's the situation? How many miles outside of Chicago was it though? On the it was like seventeen miles south. Is it near Gary? Sure. Kind of clean up Gary, Indiana, I don't have a map. Gary, what do I look Indiana, like a geographer? Gary, <laughs> Indiana, Gary, Indiana. I just remember that from a high school play. Well, anyways. But I maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's like his retirement home. Lake Michigan's nice. Lake Michigan is, is, is the Mothman retirement I would probably community. expect him to go to like the Upper Peninsula of, across, you know, the water. Okay. Maybe not in Indiana yeah. near Chicago. But I don't know, man. Maybe he's warming up. He's getting ready for the Mothman Festival this he's year. Like getting, he's like up there, like yeah, getting it's a subtle you know, plug that we will be there. He's getting back in shape, doing some sightings, looking at looking at some people. Apparently, <laughs> he, eating some stuff. He just casually shows up to our meet and greet the night before the Mothman. Festival. Heck yeah! In fact, let's put that. You know what? I'm making it. If you want to see him, we are going to summon him. Special guest in <laughs> Pullman Square. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have like the like <laughs> Mothman's actually taking over our Instagram story the night before the, yes, Mothman, the, night festival. Before the Mothman festival. <laughs> no, I don't know. Please stay is... tuned for a series of premonitions. It gives <laughs> gives me hope, though. Uh, that's that's cool that he's back. Hopefully, nothing bad happens. But mm-hmm. you know, it's like he took some time off. It's kind of like when Michael Jordan retired for a couple years. Mm-hmm. He left the game. Everybody missed him, and he came back wearing the four or five. Mm-hmm. And he wrecked havoc again. And I think it's time for Mr. Mothman. He's going to announce that he's joining the league again. He's coming back, coming back out of retirement. It's time. So when's Mothman going to do his Michael Jordan plays baseball thing where he goes and he decides he wants to be an accountant? Well, that was, it was probably like, it, that would have already happened. That was, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I don't he's know. Probably, I mean, maybe that's what he's been doing all this time as he's been yeah. like off like. Yeah. <laughs> Doing something. He's just been, he's, I don't know, man. It's just kind of, it's odd that, again, I go back to this. Maybe he's Where's the a, video? Maybe Where's, he's been an electrician. Everybody's yeah. got a phone with a camera on it now. Where's the video? Where's That's the video true. of this? That's true. I want to know. That's why you when you're in the moment, like, do you immediately go to your, your phone? Like, Truthfully, 
I don't. My I w- friends yeah. get mad at some of my friends get mad at me because I have a tendency to like record everything. Yeah, that's normally true. in like yeah, funny yeah. situations, but I'm very quick at getting my phone out and getting well, that record you know, going. You're and the I'm a photography guy, so yeah, but it's like, come on, millions of people in the world, and all these people keep seeing stuff. Somebody. Like, get me something that doesn't look like a potato filmed it. Like, don't, I don't want no. like a, like a, like a one frame per second. Like, all I'm saying is that you never glitchy. see how the fight started. You just see the fight because people yeah. don't think about it until something is like, uh, until something's already built up enough. One time, this is just like a quick, funny story. In high school, I saw a fight, and in the middle of the fight, this guy swung and he farted when he swung, and it ended the fight. <laughs> I don't know why this made me think of that. He like straight up just farted in the middle of the fight. And then everybody laughed and the two guys like dapped each other up and they were fine. All right. <laughs> but I filmed it. I had that on video. That's what I mean. I bet you still have it. I, it was on like <laughs> a Blackberry. So oh, I don't Blackberry. still have it. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't know why that made me think of that. But again, with the video, I just need somebody to come, come correct here. Like take, take your freaking DSLR out. Give me some all quality pictures. I, I'm like J. Jonah Jameson right now. Like, I need pictures of Mothman. Now, here's the thing. Now, here's the thing. Now, here's now, the let thing. Me, let me take you. Let here's, me take you. Here's, here's, here's the, thing. the thing. Here's the thing. Can we take pictures of Mothman? Is he just invisible in the pictures? Well, is it like, uh, are we able to take close-up pictures of Mothman? Maybe, Maybe that's not. when. Honestly, though, if the Mothman came, I don't want to talk about him. Because that's when you get injured cold standing over you. So if I saw the Mothman, I, you wouldn't even know. Yeah, maybe I, I maybe Mothman, did see him, and I wouldn't say it. If you saw Mothman and had a story about it, then you'd have injured cold visiting and being like, do you know David? Because <laughs> that's the thing. I've been reading this Mothman Prophecies book, and injured cold comes, and he speaks like this. But it's telepathic, right? Book. Sometimes it's telepathic. Sometimes it's not. Now... Injured Cold will always say that he knows this person, and it's like some like innocuous person in the community. Yeah. Like, I am a friend of Gary Baker, and so people, Baker. But he'll say that like the same thing to everybody else. Yeah. So it's like he tries to like insert himself in situations. Most people shoo him away, though. That's is so that all you got to do? You can just get, he just leaves because he like, but he'll stand over your bed sometimes. Uh, while you're sleeping, that I, I'm getting to that part. Um, that's the, it's been alluded to within the book, but Ugh. what a creep! He's a creep. With that, let's hear a word from our sponsors. Have you given Robots Roundtable a shot yet? This is the new show where the hosts from the Robots Radio Network podcast, all of your favorite hosts, get together every week. And they talk a little bit more deeply about some of the things going on in the games and the things that they're enjoying recently. So if you're looking for a fun show talking about games, entertainment with all of your favorite hosts and also a really wacky competition at the end of each episode, give Robots Roundtable a shot. It's available on iTunes and Spotify and basically everywhere. All right, Austin, this week we have chosen uh, to talk about a subject that is uh, seems like it would be funny, but is oftentimes considered uh, not very funny, uh, also a little creepy, it's not funny also to me. incredibly creepy. It's always been creepy to me. I'm you've, glad we did this. So you've always been afraid of clowns. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm afraid of you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my gosh yeah i'm gonna go get an aloe burn. plant man that's yeah. a, that's a real burn right <laughs> man <there. laughs> these are just some little jokey jokes i hope you know a little joke well my favorite with clowns is when they put the the uh, when people make like a, a bad take or a bad tweet they'll have the the gif of the guy put on clown makeup and like, yeah. this is you and it's like yeah putting on the clown makeup there was uh that's good somebody like posted something it was like uh it was like a clown restaurant and it was like, mm-hmm. go ahead and reserve a seat. <laughs> but no, that was, what was the joke? It's like my favorite insult is who is this clown? Because it implies that one, the person is a clown and two, they're not a good clown uh, and they're so bad that you don't know who they, they are. are. So, true. Hey, that's clown. It's weird how prominent 
clowns are in our culture in 2019 still. Like, right. it's still such a thing. I don't know. Like all of the other inter- entertainment options we have, yet people are still clowns. But not like, hating on it. Like no, I know no, no. there are still, but it's just like it. You would think that it'd be such an antiquated thing, like not really a need for it. But there's still a demand for people to be clowns. And like it's more prevalent than even like people that like, like I like like I don't know. Like you don't see a ton of sword swallers. You know, mm-hmm. there's only a few of those. Yeah, fire breathers. I yeah, mean, and they're all like, that's a fire together. Breather. In a th- like a cl- like clown a clown can travel yeah you know is and it could be solo its own thing right. but generally your people that are like tossing fire and mm-hmm. and doing kind of that antiquated comedy or yeah. entertainment uh, one of my buddies is a fire breather he just decided one day in college he was like I really want to learn how to do this and he can he gets paid sometimes he'll cool. go do different parties and festivals and stuff right and which I is get, cool and I get that because yeah. guess what that's what Cool. There's like an assumption. It's like, okay, you're going to breathe fire, and I get that, and that's what you're going to do. There's no like, yeah. there's no trickery going on. There's no like you, questionable. You, you know what you're going to get, and right. you're still amazed. You're still like, whoa. You're still like, whoa. It's a sense yeah. of wonder. Well, it's like you see a sword, a sword swallower. <laughs> a sword swallower. A sword swallower. Uh, you see them, and it's not like, are they going to use that sword to chop me in half? Yeah. No, they're just, they're just going to shove that sword down their throat, Yeah, uh, which is... I can't Just think about for very long. Go terribly wrong. Yes, for them. It makes me too nervous to really enjoy. Yeah, Fire breathing, it's just like, true. oh, that's dope. That's true, but because then I start to think about it a little bit, and it's kind of like watching somebody get a shot, and it's like, eh, yeah. I'm uh, like, oh, uh, I really hope they know what they're doing at this yeah. point. I really hope they're safe. Like, yeah. come on, let's get that thing out of there. Like, yeah. I'm more excited about them not having the or sword Or when they in their do throat. the curved one. Oh, yeah. Seen that one where they're, like, tossing their head back and forth and they're, like, moving yeah. the curtain. I'm, like, I'm like, hey, man, you're Ugh. just making me hurt and uncomfortable. Let's just, let's, I'll give you money if you just stop. Yeah. I don't know. Fire breathing, though. Oh, man. Whew. I could watch that all day. Does he like have the batons that he lights and he twirls and he's like? I think so. Yeah, he does cool like stuff. different, and he'll like juggle some flaming things too. He does all sorts of stuff. Um, really talented though, awesome. really good. And he started learning how to like throw axes like crazy accurately. I don't know, man. He's he does a lot. Is of Is he stuff. trying to be uh, uh, what the the dude from uh, Gangs of New York? The, oh the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what, is that his aesthetic that he's going he's, for? He's 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 wild, man. I was with him one time, and this guy busted out our buddy's back window, and this guy just chased this man down the street and just beat the crap out of him. <laughs> like, didn't even, like, didn't even hit him. He just, like, caught him, kicked him in the back from behind, and then every time the guy tried to get up, he was just like, nope, and <laughs> just kept kicking him down. Oh and gosh. coincidentally, like, a few months later, I think he started fire breathing. It, like, oh, it, it awakened a beast inside of a him. A beast inside of him. Well, speaking know. of a beast inside Let's of you. Let's talk about beasts. Yes. So we both decided that um, it was fe- seemed very relevant yeah. to uh, to talk about clowns with the uh, movie uh, coming up uh, this weekend that I'm going to go see. Yeah, and it's going to be great. Can I tell you something without you getting mad at me though? Sure. Yeah, I've never watched it. You told me that either version. You told me that earlier. Yeah, you- I know the whole premise. I know you know. I know about everything. It's one of the best horror movies in years. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm the just, the I'm newer just, version. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the newer here's now here's a hot take. Mm-hmm. Newer version's way better than the older version. I've heard it's scarier. Yeah, I mean it, it's scarier, but it's not like it's kind of like you know how like The Shining is scary. Yeah, but it's not cheap. Right. There's no like cheapness to that. Yeah, it, it, that's the way I feel. Often at times I feel like horror movies can be rather cheap. Yeah. You know, and like in like how they're building suspense. This one is like they are. It's it's very character driven, and so all of the yeah. th- like. The, the things are very imaginative that this creature mm-hmm. does. and Was the kid from Stranger Things in the new one? Mm, the Finn, Finn Wolford? Yes. And, and then Bill Hader's in the new one, right? Yeah, he's playing um, the Finn Wolford character in the future. Grown up. All of them have, like, famous actors that are portraying who yeah. they are in the future. I really like Bill Hader. So maybe yeah. I need to watch. Is it, like, scale of 1 to 10, how many jump scares? Oh, Maybe one or two, like not really, like, not a ton. Is it more like just creepy? Like, yeah, it's, I I love creepy stuff. I love genuinely scary right. things. It's I just hate jump like, scares. You, the, you'll see the kid. It's it's a lot of the classic core trip. Is like you'll see the kid. 
you'll see the thing in the background. You'll be like, kid, you need to turn around. You need to get out of there yeah. right now. They're not realizing it. They're kind of looking at stuff. And yeah. so it's more like this thing trying to chase yeah. them or tra- it's more like this thing trying to chase or trap them right. rather than. Well, I definitely want to watch it. Yeah, you should. You should but, really watch it. But, but the Selena reason, isn't into horror movies very yeah. much and doesn't really she like likes them, it, though. but she likes it just because she the, likes it. She likes it uh, just because of the the kids are all great. Like yeah. it's it's really we watched it again, which is a rarity for a horror movie. Wow. Um, I'm gonna watch it. I just is there anything like you particularly can't handle? I mean, other than clowns, <laughs> that's the thing. I've always been terrified of clowns, and I think that's why. But the funny thing is, I think I've always been scared of clowns uh-huh. because of the idea of it, even though I never saw it. Uh-huh. So it's like without even watching it, it scarred me to then now not want to go back. And it's it's weird. Mm-hmm. But I'll I'll you know I'll muster up and. I think I think you'll like it. it fine. I think that you will find it entertaining. Yeah. It will be scary, but it won't be like it's not like it's not trying to get you. You know, yeah. it's not like a lot of horror movies these days are like they're just trying to make you jump and 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 jive and yeah. and wail. This one is more like The Shining, where it's like it's trying to make you think about this. Yeah, maybe I'll I'll bit. watch it this weekend. Yes. Maybe. So, but I definitely. So why are why are you afraid of clowns? What it, what's the what why, why are you know what's uh, other than it just that idea of Pennywise? Well, that's the thing. I don't. I never knew why I was. Mm-hmm. So I, I did some research okay. on on the psychology of of people and clowns. People and clowns. Okay, I'm ready. So to I guess there's not as far as I could find like an official 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 phobia name. Okay. But the closest one was I think it's uh, coulrophobia. C o u l R O P H O B I A, fear of clowns. I think it literally translates to a fear a fear of someone on stilts. Though mm-hmm. I think that's for some reason that became the fear mm-hmm. of clowns. And I like started looking back um, because a lot of people seem to have this question, but there's never really been a definitive. This is why people are afraid of clowns, right? Um, and I think one of the biggest things that I could find was that clowns at least modern renditions of them, they paint their face. They paint a smile. They paint a frown. Right. You you can't really see their real emotion. So they're kind of emotionless, which reminds me of my argument with Slender Man on the last episode. Mm-hmm. Of you don't you can't see like you you feel a disconnect, I think, is the thing. Like you mm-hmm. you, you can't connect to that. Like it's I think that alone makes you kind of uneasy. And uh I looked up, and there was this old um, theory. I don't know if it was Freud or someone else. It was like the uncanny. Was that Freud? I haven't heard of that. Well, there's the uncanny valley is what it's called. And okay, it's I've when heard of that. Something, it looks almost but not quite like a human. Like right. something yeah, is yeah, off. Yeah. Something is, right. it's like you can tell, but something's off. It's so like a mannequin. There's some stuff with that in like video games and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and like kind of the uncanny valley where they try to make it like really photorealistic, mm-hmm. but then it's like a little too photorealistic. Yeah. And it's like, that's a little too human. Like these new robots now, like the AI that they're building. Yeah. The, those are giving a lot that, of people like, the... It's like the one in Saudi Arabia that can like have a conversation with people. And yeah. And it's like so close, but there's just something about the face. It's, it's weird. I don't know. Mannequins. That makes me think of there's a Doctor Who episode where the mannequins, like the first one with Christopher Eccleston, when the mannequins are attacking everybody. Yeah, I tried to show um, Selena uh, Doctor Who, and I think I started with that one, and yeah. she has a fear of mannequins. and so It's a creepy, it's weird. So we don't watch Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, man. But it, I think that's part of it for me. Um, and I read up, and so clowns used to be in, like, royal courts. They were very mm-hmm. big. I mean, obviously, they are they're like the jester. Like the jester, or, yeah, yeah, Stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that and so they were the only people that could poke fun at royalty without any consequence. And so a lot of studies that I read, some people believe that um, that created a disconnect with people and that they kind of saw them as not trustworthy. They weren't one of them because mm-hmm. they had this special... You know, they could do this, they could do that. So, like, a lot of people just didn't trust them, I mm-hmm. guess. Um, and then as it kind of evolved into the 16th century, you saw a lot of clowns in um, a lot of, like, Italian theater. 
I guess, is where it kind of evolved into. But most of them were seen as uh, mischievous and like they didn't really have a lot of morals. Right. So they were just kind of bad people. Um, and then obviously in the 19th century is when it really gained popularity with like the white face, painted face right, clown. Right, the, the how we view clowns now. Yeah, yeah and yeah. it, it kind of became associated with entertaining children, which mm-hmm. is funny that that was what it was mostly used for was like entertaining children. Children's entertainment. Um, yeah. And then... I guess a lot of people feel that it had already been ingrained in society, though, that mm-hmm. they were troublemakers and not mm-hmm. to be trusted. Right. And I mean, really, when you think about it, I get it, like, why you would think they're entertainment for children. But the paint and all of the outfits, and everything, it is creepy. It, it's just weird. I think yeah. it's too much for kids. And you got some kids that love them, but then you see the vast majority, like me, you get the kids crying when their parents try to get them to take a picture with a clown. Like, mm. you just... Ew. So here's something that I found out just in, in brief. It's kind of like... I almost, like, worked worked backwards this time around. Mm-hmm. So, like, you kind of got, like, a lot of this, like, early, like, how the clowns came to be stuff. Yeah. So I found out about this clown that was very popular <laughs> in the 1800s, and I didn't write down his name because I'm an idiot, uh, and, eh. you know, I just don't like sourcing it. But it's a very I famous clown. Uh, in the 1800s, who was like popular, well known? I'm sure that somebody is screaming their name because <laughs> there was a, a kid that was heckling him, yeah. and he um, beat the kid with a cane and killed him. Oh wow! Um, in public, and so the idea of the killer clown started then. Wow! And that's when clowns became untrustworthy. <laughs> in that like killer clown <laughs> sense, is because of, there was a clown that killed a kid. I'm just picturing like. The week and he after got that. he got away with it too. He like a hundred percent got away with I'm it. I'm picturing like the week after that, they're all like at their weekly clown meeting, like sitting in the circle, mm-hmm. and everybody's just like staring. It's like, Mike, man, we worked so hard. We, we tried. We so worked hard. so hard to get in these people's good graces, and mm-hmm. then there you go, just messing it up. And Mike's like sitting back, just taking like a long drag of a cigarette, and he's like, had it coming. Just flicks his cigarette and walks out. These are the thoughts that I have when these like, situations, when, when are these situations arise. So then he just got kicked out of the clown club. It's hard to get kicked out of the clown club. I uh, I, well, I think he continued clowning around. He, I, like he, he got away with it. He didn't lose his clown license. No, he didn't lose the license. <laughs> the clown. You said this was in the 1800s. This is in the 1800s. Yeah, he wow. was in. It was French. Uh, French. He was in France and ah. did this. And wow. the name escapes me. It's a very, like, if you saw the name, you would be like, oh, yeah, I recognize that. That that seems like a familiar name. You know, you, clown <laughs> history, yeah. you'd be aware. I'm uh, very up on my clown uh, Up facts. on your clown history. Yeah. So <laughs> do you remember uh, back maybe like a, a year or two ago, the uh, the clown sightings? Dude, that was the, what a weird point in society that people were <laughs> People were really out here wiling out in clown costumes. So there was, was there so was one in Ashland when I was living in Ashland, Kentucky. Yep. It was like a week after they started, and I'm running at the park, and I get in my car, and on Twitter everybody's like, "There's a clown uh, running around Ashland Park," which there's there's a joke in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Did they was, have any pictures of it? Um, someone posted it. I think I don't remember mm-hmm. if it was very clear. But it was, I think it made the news. They were like a clown, because this was when it was paranoia just mm-hmm. everywhere. Mm-hmm. They were like a clown was at Ashland City Park scaring people, blah, blah, blah. And I think it just, people were just jumping on that wave, man. They just wanted to be, it, it was a well, thing. Well, it started with like, they saw some outside of this, like, it was in North Carolina, I think, yeah. that they saw these clowns. So I was looking into, I was like, what is this situation? And so I looked at this at this thing called the Phantom Clown Theory, yeah. which was uh, coined in 1981 by a cryptozoologist named Lauren Coleman Yeah. Uh, after this incident in uh, Brooklyn, Massachusetts, where children said that clowns attempted to lure them into a van. So there was this case, but then once that broke the news... Kids from across America for a good period started reporting that they saw clowns and that they were doing the same thing. Mm. And here's the thing. This occurred every five or six years after that. And this was before it was written. This was before it and like yeah. Pennywise and all this was this predated all of this. Stuff. Right. So it was like every five or six years, people continued with these like clown sightings all the way up to 2016. 
Hmm. So there's like a cycle where this mass hysteria breaks out. So in 2016, it was another case of that mass hysteria where yeah. a lot of people said that they saw clowns. People in Bluefield said that they saw clowns. Yeah. Like, but it's this, once you think about it, it like the, the nature of it, people try to justify that they, so they, they don't make it up necessarily, yeah. but it's just like they're paranoid enough so that they can picture it. And then once somebody reports it, then it's like a whole oh, big man. thing. So give it a couple years, and we'll have another. Well, it's this clown whole, hysteria. Yeah, give it. Uh, I, I bet you that you'll see some here soon. In yeah. fact, there was one. I looked at one this um, that happened this summer. Yeah. Of this guy in Kentucky or Tennessee, I think it was in Tennessee, yeah. that um, they were like, "There's a clown in a van," and they went to the guy, and it was this like 80 year old dude, and he's like, "Oh, oh, every year I dress up as a clown and just like." give out candy to kids and it's like i've been doing this for <laughs> years and years and years this is something that i just i like to give back to the community so it was like yeah. harmless but creepy yeah but also very harmless but then that started like this whole that's the thing about clowns man they could just be standing on the corner of the road with a balloon i'm not going close to it a clown out of a circus setting i do not trust even in the circus i don't really like it but that people can that's it's the easiest prank you if you're dressed as a clown and right. it's nighttime step foot outside for five minutes oh yeah and you're the, gonna be and, all over twitter well that's the, that's the interesting thing is it's like that's like in, in the modern context like clown hysteria yeah like people are obsessed with are like subconsciously obsessed with seeing clowns and reporting that the, the clowns are out there yeah I like to report that all kinds of clowns are on Twitter, you know, but, <laughs> but the clown emoji is like one of the most used emojis right now, just because if yeah. someone, like you said, someone has like a, a dumb take, mm -hmm. someone will just reply with the clown emoji. So then it took me down this rabbit hole, Austin, of like, well, okay, because like, I would expect nothing less. Like everything, it takes me down quite the rabbit hole. Yes. Uh, so this is a case of mass hysteria. And I was like, well, I wonder if there's been anything like this. Yeah. So the first thing I came up with was the Halifax Slasher. Okay. Halifax, no uh, Nova Scotia? Yes. Okay. No, in England, I think. England. I think it's in England. Uh, so, well, I don't know. It could be Canada. I don't know. Locations are, are meaningless, says yeah. the geographer. Um, Halifax so, somewhere. <laughs> the week-long scare began after Mary Gledhill and Gertrude Watts. That's a, a Gertrude Watts. That's yeah. quite a name. Claimed to have been attacked by a mysterious man with a mallet and bright buckles on his shoes. Five days later. Five days later. Five days later. Five days later. <laughs> five days later. Mary Scutcliffe reported an attack on herself. Reports of attacks by a mysterious man with a knife. Or a razor continued and nicknamed the Halifax Slasher. The situation became so serious that Scotland Yard, so that tells me that this is in England, yeah. uh, uh, was called in to assist the Halifax police. Vigilante groups were set up on the streets, and several people mistakenly assumed uh, to have been the attacker were beaten up. Businesses in town where they were all shut down. Rewards for capture... Uh, of the attacker were promised. Reports came uh, came of more attacks in cities nearby. The panic spread so much that vigilante gangs were roaming the streets of the town and Hilda Lodge. And after Hilda Lodge was attacked, quote unquote, uh, Clifford Edwards, a local man who had gone to help, was later accused of being the slasher himself. Soon a mob gathered, and after they had started a chant for his death, police escorted him home. In the evening of November 29th, Percy Waddington, who had reported an attack, admitted that he had inflicted damage upon himself. Others soon made similar admissions, and the Scotland Yard investigation concluded that there was no slasher attack. Five local people were subsequently charged with public mischief and uh, public mischief offenses, and four were sent to prison. Wow! So it was this like. They wanted to say they that wanted they that like it's like they wanted the excitement of there being like. A serial killer on the loose. People like to do that, which is so weird. Mm -hmm. Just psychologically so strange, just ingrained in human DNA that we... Yeah, I don't even know how to explain it. So for clowns, that kind of covers what I think is like the, the like excitement of it. Yeah, it's like people want you want to be scared. Secretly want to 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 like there to be clowns. Yeah, it's out, it is excitement. With chains and such. 
Yeah. Why did the clowns in the last like roundabout? They all had chains. All the reports were the clowns with iron chains, and I'm like, why did they all have? Where chains? did the chains come from? <laughs> Are they like left over from the, the wallet chains that we all had in the '90s? Oh like, my god, I hadn't thought about that in a long time. What is going on? So the second example I came up with were meowing nuns. So okay. in the first case, a nun in a large French convent began meowing one day. Soon others joined in. And eventually every nun in the convent was meowing. The noise became structured. All the nuns would meow together for several hours at the same time every day. The neighbors could hear the collective caterwauling. It's a fun word to say. <laughs> and were uh, understandably annoyed. Eventually the nuns quieted down after being threatened uh, with a beating by soldiers. The soldiers beat the nuns for meowing? They, they, they threatened them to, oh, okay. to, to, to beat them for, for, uh, for meowing so much. It's kind of like yawning. Like, you see somebody else yawn. Yeah, you see you somebody. Or, like, it's like an inside joke that kind of goes too far. Where yeah. you're just, like, saying it all the time. Everybody. And if you're just like, like meow. <laughs> pounding on the door. Stop. Because, like, what do you do? You know, back in, back in ye olden times, what do you do as a nun all day? And most of these people that are nuns are, like, like children like that have been yeah. taken out of, that didn't really have a, a this is true like they what do they do to entertain themselves that's of you know just, they can just meow all the time um just an inside little joke right so it's like an inside jokes. joke and it's like that natural like oh well, yeah so like that's a piece of the clowns where it's like oh but you saw the clown yeah i saw the clown yeah yeah well, you know that you're only cool if you saw the clown right yeah yeah, yeah 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 and so then everybody can be doing it and then it's like okay so it's like getting your first kiss. Like you would tell your friends like, oh, yeah, I, you know, I made out with I made out with somebody before. So the next like, thing I was entirely amazed by and just the explanation of it. So this one is a little longer, uh, but it's quite the story. So this is called the French dancing fever. <laughs> the name the titles yes. are my favorite. The outbreak began in July 1518 when a woman, Miss Tofria, began to dance uh, f- Fervently, fervently, fervently. Fre- what? It's F E R V E N T L Y. Help me out here, English major. Spell that again slowly. F R E V E N T L Y. Fervently, fervently. Sure. I, I. You're the. You're supposed to be an English major. You're just. You're reading it too fast for my brain to keep okay. up right now. It's been so a long this day. Miss um, uh, Miss Torfia began to dance in a street in Strasbourg. This Strasbourg. lasted somewhere between four to six days. Within a week, 34 others had joined, with, and within a month, there were around 400 dancers, predominantly female. Some of these people uh, would die from heart attacks, stroke, or exhaustion. One report indicates for a period that, uh, that the plague of dancing killed around 15 people per day. However, the sources of the city of Strasbourg, all at the time of the events, did not mention the number of deaths or even that there were fatalities. Historical documents, including the physician's notes, cathedral sermons, local and regional chronicles, and even notes issued by the Strasbourg City Council are clear that the victims danced. It is, it is not known why these people danced, some even uh, to their deaths. As the dancing <laughs> plague worsened, <coughs> concerned nobles sought the advice of local physicians who ruled out astrological and supernatural causes, instead announcing that the plague was a natural disease caused by hot blood. However, instead of prescribing bleeding... I don't know why. I guess back in the day, that was the thing. I think, yeah, we got a leech. You had to bleed it or something. Yeah. Uh, Authorities encouraged more dancing, in part by opening two guild halls and a grain market and even constructing a wooden stage. The authorities did this because they believed the dancers would recover only if they danced continuously night and day. To increase the effectiveness of the cure, authorities even paid for musicians to keep the afflicted moving. The strategy was a disaster after the policies were applied. The illness underwent a dramatic growth, performing dances in more public space facilitated the spread of the psychic contagion. Historian John Waller stated that the marathon rudder, uh, that a marathon rudder could not have lasted the intense workout that these men and women did hundreds of years ago. Now here's, now here, so, okay, just let's, let's settle on that for a second. That's like an extreme uh, flash mob. Is that what they're called? Uh, yeah, it's like, it makes me think of, um, Hocus Pocus, the Sanderson sisters, when she's like, dance till you die. Like when she's up on stage and she puts the spell on everybody Mm -hmm. and they just spend the whole night dancing. Mm -hmm. That's weird. It it reminds me of the the Bee Gees. uh, Fever night, fever (laughs) night, fever. That's a good uh, impersonation. I got to get my falsetto in here. You know, I'm going to start my singing career uh, to get these dancers moving. So that's like, 
a little bit like as as I read that I was like this is a thing that happened like everyone just started dancing I could see two people like dancing over to somebody like hey why are you dancing I don't know all right well cool like they just keep going no one knows why anyone else is dancing but they're just going with it I, I, I was trying to think I was trying to think of like how this could re- and it's like unexplained there's like an unexplained situation everyone wanted to one up each other i suppose like like how if you like i understand well i don't i don't know i don't understand i don't understand yeah the, the amount of people that there were like over 400 people just like dancing yeah something it's just weird how things spread like that like just human psychology is such a weird thing right i i don't know there are things I don't think we'll, we will ever comprehend fully. And my favorite thing is that the government decided, okay, here's how we're going to solve that. We're going to give them more places to dance. Yeah. We're going to give them more reasons to dance, and maybe they'll stop dancing. Uh, That's not how you fix the thing. That's like, okay, let's say the, the, the Black Plague comes back, and they're like, all right, here's how we're going to get rid of the Black Plague. More rats. We're going to get all the rats, <laughs> and we're just going to... And there'll be so many rats that the Black Plague will yeah. just go away. Yeah. That's, That's not how that works. Uh, I got nothing. So, modern theories include food poisoning caused by toxic and psychoactive chemicals products of ergot fungi, which grows commonly on grains in the wheat family, such as rye, that was used for baking bread. Uh, for baking bread. Uh, ergotam, excuse me. Let me get my let me get my uh my chemistry. So yeah. Ergotam, ergotamine, ergotamine. One there of we my go. favorite parts about this show is, is, this, is your me uh, trying your to pronunciation read. of different words. It's possible. It's so hard. <laughs> ergotamine is the main psychoactive product of uh, ergot fungi, and it is structurally related to the drug lysergic acid dithalamide. I butchered that. That uh, to to shorten that, that's LSD. <laughs> um, it is also a substance uh, from which LSD was originally synthesized, and the same fungus has also been in- implicated in other major historical anomalies, including the Salem witch trials. However, Waller and the Lancet argues that this theory does not seem tenable, since it is unlikely those poisoned by ergot could have danced for days at a time nor would so many people have reacted to its psychotropic chemicals in the same way. Their, their ergotism theory also fails to explain why virtually every, uh, of, virtually every outbreak occurred somewhere along the Rhine and Moselle rivers, areas linked by water, but with quite different climates and crops. Waller speculates that the dancing was stress-induced psychosis on a mass level since... The region where the people danced was riddled with starvation and disease, and the inhabitants tended to be superstitious. Seven other cases of dancing plague were reported in the same region during the medieval era. You just hit me with a lot of info, but I it did. made me re- it made it reminded me that in college I completely BSed a uh, like a term paper mm-hmm. about the Salem witch trials and mm-hmm. the possibility of it being like fungus and. And like they, because it was yeah. the whole like the girl, these like women were having seizures and just like speaking weirdly. Well, they thought it was coming from, was it like yeast from the bread? And well, like they things? like uh, figured that it might have been something from like fungus and, and causing, because the, the, the women were behaving us. erratically and having like seizures and ticks yeah. and like weird and saying weird stuff. Yeah. And my, that's my favorite part about human history is that yeah. anytime stuff like that happened, they just thought people They're were like, possessed. Yeah. You, you're possessed <laughs> by the devil. Yeah. Um, and now <laughs> they're going to kill you. It's Science is cool. Yes. It's, I'm glad that we live in a time uh, like that. But um, Very lucky to live in the age that we do. It's just the thing about it, and, and obviously going back to the dancing and this, that, and the other, it's like, well, we, we, we'll never really know. Like, there are all of these possibilities scientifically, but, like, what was it? You know, I don't know. Will, will, will we ever be able to conclude with 100% certainty? And that's what's kind of creepy about the world in general. Is, right. It's like weird stuff can happen so easily. So that's like one of the the like fundamental things of like unexplained mass hysteria. Like yeah. all of these people 
from like a, a mental level connected that they needed to dance subconsciously yeah. and just like did it for days and days and days and days. It is weird. And it, it, you can influence other people to do things so mm-hmm. subtly. Right. And you not even realize you did it and they not even realize you did it. Right. It's such a weird, I've, I've heard like there are different games that people will play where like you, they'll try to see if they can, it, it's just, the art of influence is such a, just a weird. What, ge- what are games are you talking about? What's like the- I've seen people that like in waiting rooms, they'll see like if they can get other people to like start tapping, oh their yeah, hands or yeah, like yeah, their yeah. feet mm-hmm. or, um, and it's almost like it's similar to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like where they would work with mice and and uh, kind of get them in in the cycle of. Like, if they heard this bell or if they heard this, like, they knew what to do. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, um, I don't even know what it I is. Don't, don't know. Um, but there was, like, I, this is, like, the fourth time I've mentioned The Office today, where, like, <laughs> Jim eventually gets Dwight so accustomed to, like, I think it was, like, a certain noise, oh. like, that he's waiting for, like, a jelly bean or something or like some sort right, of treat yeah, or something. Yeah. And it's like he, and yeah. He, and then and he hands him, yeah, yeah. And at I the end, like upset. Dwight's like this and Jim's like, what are you doing? And yeah. he like has his hand out ready and for then something. He doesn't understand. He's like, yeah. What, 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 what and he mean? had just been just, uh, what is the word? I can't think of it. If, if Pavlovian, it's stuff like, it's yeah. Like Pavlovian, it's like, like a, um, when a dog hears a bell ring. Not taming, but... Um, it's a Pavlovian uh, response. What is the word? It's going to drive me crazy that I can't think of this word. Well, that's fine. Um, I, I'm sure that you drive all kinds of people crazy. <laughs> that's an understatement. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, it's conditioning. Conditioning. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. But sure. you can condition people. Right. And, you know, obviously, I think it would typically take a little bit longer than just, oh, I'm going to start dancing and these people are going to come. But, like, mm-hmm. it's on, you know, a similar type of thing. And that's always interested me is the human mind and how you can condition it to yeah. different things. So, yeah. word of the day, condition. Conditioning, yeah. yeah. So, like, going back to, like, we, we, I think that we are, like, subconsciously all obsessed with seeing clowns. That's yeah. my, what I have garnered from, Hot take. from is the, the, like, the fear of clowns, like, is so ingrained in like pop culture yeah that we are all kind of obsessed with seeing clowns that's fair as as the dogs walk into the room as the dogs walk in. uh the, so i went down that i went down that hole i try to go down this like shape-shifting hole with pennywise <laughs> because that's that's from the movie um yeah. and, and like there's some different stuff and I mean, I could go into like the astral plane, and I could go into yeah. you know the, the Dementors. <laughs> <laughs> End up down a whole other road, right? That, that, that's a whole other road. But I also wanted to talk, talk about because in the movie, it's all about these children just seeing these things, and yeah. it's like the, uh, every so often in these years, it's like connected to the clowns or connected to the children. And so uh, I was curious to find out, um, like why. Like, what's the scientific research behind, like, kids seeing things? Because yeah. that's the thing. That's a common theme for, for what I've noticed is that when you're, like, children often see ghosts or spirits or mm-hmm. monsters or something and, like, claim that that's um, something out there. And I yeah. looked at the research, and there is very little research on that overall. You would, I would expect a ton though. That's so weird. There, there's, there's very little explanation as to why, um, that is. I have a fun story once you. Well, get well, your I mean, stuff out. there's, there's some obvious ones like, yeah, um, like kids tend to come up with spooky stories when Halloween is coming up, uh, just because they see more scary things in shows. So like uh, every, it's in every mind. show has like a Halloween episode or yeah. whatever. Um, Which those but, were the days, man. Disney Channel when all the shows had their Halloween. <sighs> so kids have a harder time discerning what's real and what isn't than adults. Children are right. hardwired to learn through imaginative and pretend play, and therefore they can slip between reality and fantasy more easily than adults. I think it's similar to dogs, though, where they're just more susceptible to see things that we don't see. I think it's, I think it's real. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Well, that's the whole thing. What is it behind... So, like, when I first, when I got my dog, so my dog has two different colored eyes. My dog has a brown eye and a, and, and a, a blue eye. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what's this, like, is there, like, some sort of, sort of significance? And it was some uh, Native American tribe 
that believe that the animals, any animal with two eyes or humans with two eyes can see both the like reality and the spirit realm. Yeah. So like, that's as far as I got. I, I, I mean, it's a cool concept. Depth. though. Yeah. It's a cool concept. Yeah. I so definitely, you think. have a story about something with kids and seeing stuff. Yeah. My little sister, I mean, she's what 15 now. So this was probably 14, yeah. 13 and a half years ago, somewhere in there. Mm. Um, my dad was with my stepmom and my little sister. They were staying at my great aunt's house, which I have always said was haunted. Mm. And they were down in the basement in one of the bedrooms in the basement and sleeping down there. And it's like pitch black in the middle of the night. Right. And my dad woke up cause he heard my little sister and she was apparently laughing in the middle of the night. It was super dark and his eyes adjusted, and he could see that she was down at the edge of the bed, looking over the edge of the bed, mm-hmm. playing peekaboo. And then she jumped up, and she was laughing, and she jumped up on the bed, and she started following something around the room back and forth, just laughing, like hysterically, like the funniest thing she'd ever seen, mm-hmm. playing peekaboo still. My dad like nudged my stepmom and was like, hey, look at what your daughter is doing right now. <laughs> And they went upstairs. They like got out of there. Um, and my little brother, when he was two or three, used to say that there was a friendly ghost at, at my Aunt Patty's house mm-hmm. that he would see either in that bedroom or back in like one of the back hallways. And my great-grandfather, that was the last house he was at before he went to the hospital when he passed away. Mm-hmm. And we all swear that that's him. Because it's never been malicious, nothing. It's always... Right. And my little brother even said, it's a friendly ghost. And he never met my great-grandfather, so mm-hmm. like he wouldn't know. Right. But And my little sister used to say that when she was really little, would say the same thing. Mm-hmm. So we just all believe that it's, you know, my great-grandfather's there. But just the thought of... Think of like a one-and-a-half-year-old playing peekaboo in pitch black, just laughing, and you can't see anything. But she sees something. Like, she was alert like following something around the room back and forth so that's it, still to this day gives me the heebie-jeebies like i can't ugh. i don't i do not go into that basement by myself right and then you told me about your your um the energy portal yeah in saying yeah my little sister seeing stuff like that when she was younger right so so i would sit when i was a kid i would sleepwalk and i would sit in front of my closet and like like sit, uh, what do they call it now uh crisscross applesauce which is a fun way to you say just it. talk and i would talk to michael i didn't know anybody named michael when i was a kid so that... i just talked to michael I were your parents. I'd open the closet doors and I would talk to Michael uh, in my sleep, and I didn't know anybody named Michael. Listen, if I were if, if you were my kid, <laughs> I'm like building a completely yeah. separate building mm-hmm. for you to go. Like that's where your room's gonna be. I didn't number. I tried to escape the house all the time, like <laughs> in my sleep. I would just like <laughs> they would find me in the middle of the night, like pulling on doors and like, I, trying to break out. I only, I only like sleepwalked, sleepwalked, I sleepwalked mm-hmm. a few times in my life. Oh, but I normally, was like, I was like a wild sleepwalker. It was normally when I had a fever, mm-hmm. and I like would remember it. I remember one time I had a fever at the beach, and I woke up in the middle of the night and walked in to where my dad and my stepmom were sleeping, and they had the TV on, mm-hmm. and I just like smacked the side of the TV like ten times, <laughs> and I remember hearing them going like, "What are you doing? What are you doing?" And then I was like. And I just went and walked and got back in bed and went to sleep. That's funny. And I woke up thinking it was a dream. And mm-hmm. we were at breakfast and they were like, do you remember getting up and just smacking the TV last night? Mm-hmm. <laughs> there was that. And then other times it was, it was always, like I said, it was always when I was sick though. Right. I peed in the floor one time when I was like four, I think. I like walked in the living room. I was like. Most of mine was just <laughs> talking to Michael. Um, uh, I, you talk to Michael, I peed in the in floor. floor. You know, different, different, different childhoods. Right. So it's interesting to see, like, like the, the kids that have this imagination and have this thing associated with it. Yeah. Where you have clowns that are very, like, like tr- trying to, I guess, entertain kids with Pennywise, who is yeah. trying to go after kids. Like, it all kind of connects of, like, saying that they, like, like the, the there's an imagination yeah. since we're here. And I think that we're all... Uh, it reinforces my theory that collectively we are all obsessed with subconsciously that crown, mm-hmm. clowns are creepy now. 
Yeah. Um, I, I don't think they can't not be creepy. Yeah. Um, sorry to the 80 year old who's handing out candy on his birthday. <laughs> I, I dressed as a clown for Halloween when I was like five. My mom even did the whole face paint thing and everything. Oh, I thought you came dressed as a clown today. Boom. Uh, That's right. Got to get my burn in. Oh, man. You got me. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> good one. Oh. Uh, I'm just really. <laughs> but yeah, I, now I think back. Why did I want to be a clown? I looked terrifying. If you saw a kid you that kid. looked like. Yeah. If, if I saw me now. You would be like. Mm-mm. I would punt me through the window. <laughs> I would not play any games. Seriously. Cla- I don't know, man. They're, oh, clowns, I think, are just inherently creepy. Even without the, the, the different ways they were portrayed. Even without any mm. of that. You take away everything. If you just see a clown, it looks creepy. It, yeah. I don't... It just. It is such a disturbing image. It's just a, like a surreal person. Yeah. And I, I think, think it goes back to the uncanny stuff. It's just, it's, it's like, a person, but it's not a person. And it's, 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 it's weird because it's like, it's almost like this little part of our brain that's yeah. like attuned to that like particular thing. So clowns yeah. not necessarily being like, obviously clowns are, it could be wherever, or yeah. I guess they're out in the woods with chains or whatever that those people were saying, walking around dumpster diving or handing out candy or what have you. Um, so not necessarily a cryptid per se but psychologically but psychologically they are it's been very important they are more effective than in the in the recent memory yeah. than any other because they're everywhere entity yeah they, they are maybe not necessarily like you said as much of a cryptid as other right monsters and things but they are physically everywhere. And like the you cycle will see that them. it all goes through where it's like it started in the 80s, but then every like five years there's yeah. something that happens. It's, it's just all... like as a society, we we keep them around and we don't know why, yes. but there's still a thing. I don't know. It's still a thing. So, hey, it provides scary content, I guess. I don't know. Good That's movies. True. I need to catch up on it, on it's. Yeah, we'll have a we'll have a movie night. Yeah. It's on HBO. You got HBO? I did. I got rid of HBO last week. Maybe, Maybe <laughs> great timing, you, huh? You, you, uh, you done uh, goofed. I'll find it online somewhere. All right. Uh, so we've got a listener submitted cryptid this week from uh, user Unlooted Vault, uh, who's a fan of the show. Uh, can very I read active. It? I want. Can I read it? Yeah, sure. I was, it's all written out here. I just here's the. Now, they mentioned it in this, like, post of this thing. Here's what I did. I'm such a good researcher. Yep. I uh, went to Wikipedia and just copied uh, mm-hmm. the important parts. Yep. So uh, watch as I, as I hand this off to you. I just want to feel important. I, f- I yeah, felt... sure. <laughs> oh my I had God, all kinds of wild big... dancing fever this doing is... the LSD stories today. This is such a big moment. It is. So we're going uh, field correspondence, yaoi. Yeah, that's what that's I have written. Going. I have written as this field correspondence because we have a lot of field correspondence out in the field we do. looking for these cryptids. Yeah. Uh, if you see, by the way, if you want to report on your local cryptid or a cryptid that you've heard about or like something that like yeah. maybe your grandmother told you when you were a kid and you were like, oh my gosh, this Bloody Bones thing is crazy. We're going to get Dixie. We're, we're getting her on here to tell Bloody Bones. Yes. All if, right. If you have that, make sure to go to our Discord or our Twitter and tweet at us. Let us know. Uh, all the links for that are in our website, which is linked in the bottom of the show notes, which are, I guess, it's the description. It's not the show notes, but it's the description <laughs> on the podcast. Yeah. Go there, send us your cryptid stories, and we will read them out on the air because that's where we are, is on the air. You ready for this? I'm so ready. All right. Well, you've already read it, but you know. So. See, this is fun. This is fun. Now I get to read it. Well, I don't remember anything. Okay. I just like. All right, so the Yaoi is usually... Yowie? Yowie. I think it's Yowie. I'm going to go with Yowie. Yeah. The Yowie is usually described as a hairy and ape-like creature standing upright at between 2.1 meters and 3.6 meters, which is around 6 feet 11 to 12 feet. That's like a pretty wide range there. Right. By the way, feet. this is in Australia. I wanted to point this out. So this we've got to go with meters. Is, this is in Australia. Yeah. Right. So the Yowie's feet are described as much larger than a human's, but allegedly uh, Yowie tracks are inconsistent in shape and toe number. 
and the descriptions of Yowie f- uh, footprints provided by Yowie witnesses are even more varied than those of Bigfoot. The Yowie's nose is described as wide and flat. Behaviorally, some reports the Yowie as timid or shy, and others describe it as sometimes violent or aggressive. So we've got all sorts of Yowie's. Right, We've right. got Yowie's of all kind, of mm. all personalities. Okay. That's kind of cool. You can't really... Like, like how do you know if you're coming across a violent one? I guess if it attacks you. You're just going to be like, yo, what? <laughs> you just get hit. How, how aggressive are you feeling yeah. today, Yowie? Yeah. So in the 1870s, accounts of indigenous apes appeared in the Australian Town and Country Journal. The earliest account in November 1876 asked readers, who has not heard from the earliest settlement of the colony, the blacks speaking of some unearthly animal or inhuman creature, namely the Yahoo Devil Devil or Hairy Man of the Wood? What? Okay. The earliest settlement of the blacks speaking of some this that's just like that whole thing sucks. Yep. I don't I don't know. <laughs> I didn't feel right reading that. The Yahoo Devil yeah. Devil. Yeah. Um in you an article you know it's a devil when it's the devil devil. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's man. Like, it must be a in in an article entitled Australian Apes appearing six years later, amateur naturalist Henry James McCuey, I like that name, McCuey. Uh, claimed to have seen an indigenous ape in, on the south coast of New South Wales between Batemans Bay and Ulladula? Mm-hmm. Ulu, <laughs> Ulladula? Okay. Sure. <laughs> A few days ago, I saw one of these strange creatures on the coast between Batemans Bay and Ulladula. <laughs> That's a fun name. Makui and Ulladula. Uh, I should think that if it were standing perfectly upright, it would be nearly five feet high. It was tailless and covered with very long black hair, which was of a dirty red or snuff color about the throat and breast. Its eyes, which were small and restless, were partly hidden by matted hair and covered its head. I threw a stone at the animal, whereupon it immediately rushed off. Is that it? Is that all we got? No, here we go. Here we got one more page here. One more page. McCooey offered to capture an ape for the Australian Museum for 40 pounds. Uh, According to Robert Holden, a second outbreak of reported ape sightings appeared in 1912. The Yowie appeared in Donald Friend's uh, Hill and Diana, a collection of writings about the gold fields near Hill End in New South Wales. Friend refers to the Yowie as a species of bunyip. Got a fun story about that in a second. Holden also cites the appearance of the Yowie in a number of Australian tall stories in the late 19th and early 20th century. Um, according to top end Yowie investigator, Andrew McGinn, the death and mutilation of a pet dog near Darwin could have been the result of an attack by the mythological Yowie. The dog's owners believe dingoes were responsible. Dingo (laughs) baby. A a dingo ate your baby. Um, wow. What a story. The Yowie. So it, it's kind of like they're Bigfoot, I guess. Is that yeah, essentially? Well, I, I want to know the difference between like Bigfoot. I, I want to know the difference between Bigfoot, uh, the Yahoo, because we have the Western Yahoo, Yahoo. And that's the Yahoo Devil Devil or whatever. Yeah. Uh, the Yowie. Uh, like what? Like, I guess I think the Sheep Squatch is, is different enough because that's like. A, a Bigfoot with a, a head of a, a sheep or a ram yeah. or something. I think that's like its own thing. But like, I want to go back to Bunyip. Yeah, what's what you got? So my guy Winterbotham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Australian. That's why I chose this story. It's yeah, a nice little Australian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, uh, his their dog's name that they had for forever. His name was Bunyip. Before the, until this day, I had never heard. Bunyip anywhere else. I just thought that was their dog's name, but apparently it is an Australian, uh, it's, it's a word that Australians use. It's it's something I, it's a, I I don't, a species of Bunyip. So it's something. I'm not quite sure what a Bunyip is. I'm not a dog's name was natural scientist. The dog's name was Bunyip. And now I'm just, I need to look up Bunyips because I just thought it was a random name. I like how you say that. Say it again. Bunyip. Yeah, that's good. Bunyip. That's good. Bunyip. So I'm 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 curious as to and it's interesting I think because Australia like that middle part of Australia it's like kind of deserty yeah. not a lot of people know what that's where the Aboriginal like, people yeah, yeah. still reside right right well yeah. Uh, yeah well I mean they reside all over Australia because well like, I mean like the you know what I mean yeah yeah, yeah. the um it's it's interesting because there's a lot of that that's like a little bit unexplored yeah 
Um, so I'm curious. It's, well, it's like you know, a lot of places that you would find um, like Bigfoot sightings or that kind of yeah. stuff are like uninhabited, unexplored-ish like particular areas. Yeah. And a lot of that like whole theory is like the um, endemic uh, like wildlife and gigantism and, and um, miniaturism of animals yeah. and b- being isolated, what that creates. It's all very interesting. Australia is just a wild place in general, though, for Mm -hmm. animals Mm -hmm. and creatures. Like, some of the spiders and the different things that are... Yeah, everybody talks about the spiders when when they talk about Australia. Yeah, and then... Um, It seems like an awesome place, though. I've obviously... it's mm -hmm. It's always been big in my mind just because for my whole life, my cousins would go with Guy... They go to Australia. Yeah, they uh, go. Guy, I think Guy goes every year, every couple of years. Does he, he have family down. there? He has. He still has some family there. Mm-hmm. Um, and my cousins have made a few trips there. I've always wanted to go. It seems really nice. But so I've always. I want to go on a Yowie expedition <laughs> with Guy. We should. Guy. So here's the thing about Guy. Okay. Guy is a big time bird watcher. Okay. Loves bird watching. Mm-hmm. I hope he's listening to this. Big time bird watcher, and. Just creatures in general, right. I feel like it would be fun to go with Guy because he's him. very, very observant. And now he does, like, improv and stuff. I want to bring him up to Lake Michigan. Yeah. Well, listen, he does improv, so he listens. He's very attentive. Yes. And he pays attention to things. So mm-hmm. I feel like searching for something with him would be fun. Right. Um, But just, I don't know. I feel like it's an Australia trip with Guy would be pretty pretty. Uh, looking for Looking for yowies. Looking for yowies. Um, I need to ask bun- him what a bunyip is. Maybe maybe we can have him on again soon and talk to him talk about, about Yowie. And, you probably know and bunyip and bunyip. We'll see. Bunyip's probably just a like bunyip, a bunyip, yeah. like a dog of some sort. Probably I don't know. No. It's probably it's like my grandpa named his dog dog. It's like Australians <laughs> naming their dog dog just this, on a bunyip. This is dog. <laughs> he said he wanted to have a dog's name that he could remember because he was in his eighties. Yeah. He was like, I just want to, I just want to be able to remember the name. So he's like, dog, dog. <laughs> Well, and dog it was. So. Well, I I named my dogs human names and yeah. weirdo, and it's like if we have anybody over at our house named Lucas or Russell, um, then yeah. it'd be like, oh, my dog's named that, and then that's like a little bit derogatory towards them because it's <laughs> like they're not a dog, they're a human. But yeah. so far, we have not had anybody over at our house named Lucas or Russell. I prefer human names for dogs. Though. My my parents too. named one of our dogs Cookie. Not a fan. Mm-hmm. I. I, I named a, my dog a roommate Sammy. in college that named his cat Apple Juice Godzilla. So I mean, I named I had a I had a um, a bunny rabbit mm-hmm. and I named it Rabioli. I was in like third grade. That's fun. Yeah, I like that. But I had a hamster named Peter. <laughs> I feel like, like hamsters are like the designated animal to name yeah. something crazy. Hamsters, yeah. Peter, just Peter. That's good. But then I named my dog Sammy, and then they named the dog Cookie, and I just. Maybe I'll name my next dog Bunyip. I think you should. I think that uh, what everybody else should do is uh, thank you for listening. First of all, thank you for listening. Now, what you should do is you should go to our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and iTunes. Leave us a review. Contact us. Follow the show. Do all that fun stuff at everything where the underscore cryptid cast you can find us or po- I, I was out running the other day and our neighbors have like a stand up of sasquatch and so i snapped a picture of me with the sasquatch or bigfoot yeah. or whatever and uh was like oh look at me with the sasquatch or look at me i went to the flatwoods monster museum that's yeah. something that i did that uh, yeah. eventually i'm going to talk about before i encounter another spirit stand <laughs> Um, there was a a number of different things that we are communicating and having fun with on our social media. So be sure to follow us there. Tell your friends about the show and enjoy just, just living and looking for the greater mysteries in life. That was deep. I just, I just felt very personal. I felt very personally connected to our listeners and friends. Oh, the other thing that I was going to talk to you about, the one last thing in response to our listeners and friends, I've decided on a name for our listeners. Okay. Um, so Selena and my wife in the past has, uh, when we did vault boys WV, they were like, uh, what do you call your listeners? I was like, vault boys and girls. And she was like, that sounds dumb. And I was like, yep, that sounds dumb. And then I was like, vaulties. And she was like, that's even more dumb. Yeah, so I've decided dumb. that our listeners are cryptomaniacs. Oh, I thought they were going to be believers. Believers. <laughs> believers. Believers? No, yeah. because we're not Justin Beaver. 
or whatever his name is. <laughs> Justin Bieber? Bieber? Bieber. <laughs> Justin Bieber. That's a new cryptid I just invented uh-huh. right now. The Justin Bieber. The Justin Bieber. Yeah. Uh, showing up at... So they're cryptomaniacs? Cryptomaniacs, yes. And, uh, that's, pretty, that's a pretty, like... Like pretty rad name, cryptomaniacs. Yeah, our 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 like raw because we are starting cryptomania. Um, that's what we're. Yeah. that's our goal. Let's just start this. So I think I don't know if in this show I'm gonna have it, but I'm making like a sound effect that's gonna be like cryptomaniac, maniac, maniac. You know, you know that song like from Flashdance. I used to like that song until you just did that. Well, that's what I'm. I'm gonna remix it, and it's gonna be great. And you're gonna be like, whoa, how do you I do that? I can't wait. Well, can't wait. As far as uh, what we have to say, I think that's it for today. So, Austin, why don't you lead us out? Uh, From holler to highway, we've got you covered six ways to Sunday. I love how now I get to do that. This podcast was hosted by Dave Chapins and Austin O'Connor. Find them on Twitter at CryptidCastDave and OCO underscore photo. Music produced by Dave Chapins. Artwork by James Addison. Links to our social media and merch are down in the description below. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net. Have you ever wondered how deep the Elder Scrolls lore rabbit hole goes? Have you got a grasp of the basics and want to find out more about the universe? Written in Uncertainty is here to help you. We'll be mixing in philosophy, theology, and whatever other theory is useful with Elder Scrolls texts to untangle some of the biggest questions in the series, like what are dragon breaks, how does Chim work, where did the Dwemer go, and more. Check us out at writteninuncertainty.com or find Written in Uncertainty on any podcatcher. Thanks for listening and catch you later in the grey maybe of Tamriel.